Tech Reimagined. Redefining the relationship between people and technology. Brought to you by Endava. This is Tech Reimagined. All right, welcome back to the Tech Reimagined podcast. In this edition of our show, we're talking about how we've had to reimagine distributed ways of working during the current circumstances, particularly as we stay home in these really trying and difficult times. I have two colleagues with me today, two software delivery experts, Bogdan Tindecki and Vladimir Markovich. Hello, guys. How are you? Fine, thanks, Seth. Hi, Seth. All right, so both of you have led very large distributed teams located across numerous locations and have done so for a large number of years. Bogdan, would you like to give us a brief overview of your current role in the company? Yeah, sure, Seth. So uh, I'm delivery partner in Endava, and basically I'm responsible for uh, Endava business in relationship with the customers that I'm looking for. I'm here to help my customers to be successful and get the most from uh, the partnership with Endava. That implies a lot of activities that we'll talk a little bit about them uh, later. Of course. Okay. And Vladimir? Thanks, Seth, and good afternoon from Belgrade, Serbia. I'm leading our U.S. technology group, and uh, for our non-Endava listeners, that's a sort of a business unit in Endava focused on working with the U.S.-based technology clients. So at the moment, we have around uh, 40 active projects with uh, a little bit about 350 engineers involved. Seven, eight years ago, I fully moved to a dark business side. So it's been a while since I wrote my last line of code, but I still consider myself as an engineer. All right. Excellent. Thank you both. So, you know, we're in a situation right now in the throes of a global pandemic that I don't think anybody really expected to have the scale and impact that it has. And, you know, we keep saying unprecedented times, unprecedented times. It's it's causing a rift in the way we usually do things. It's causing a lot of challenges, but it's also creating opportunities to think about how we do things differently and how we engage with individuals and, and you know, other people to get the same amount of work done, the same type of work done. But you know, we have to do it differently. So, I mean, this is true even for our podcast right now, because usually we're inside a studio and today we're all distributed. Now that's typically how I've done podcasts, but you know, being together, seeing other people, getting to read the room and feel that kind of that energy without it, it's tough to do work sometimes. So we're here today to talk about how we can overcome these obstacles with our highly distributed teams and and figuring out that what are the best ways of working that we can employ right now? What are the, the kind of pivots that we need to make, the things that we need to change to continue doing the high level of software engineering that we do and that, you know, that everybody does. So there's a heavy reliance right now on, on the tech and the applications and the process to keep a connection with customers or, you know, providing important services. And it's, it's a lot of the conversation has been about tools, but there's also a serious need for a lot of companies to completely you know, pivot what they're doing and reprioritize everything in some cases just to, to, to overcome the, you know, the obstacle of being apart from one another. So given that we're used to kind of working in a distributed way, but now having to work in a much more dispersed way as well, Vlada, how are you keeping in touch with your teams and, and managing the same levels of communication between everyone and, and maintaining productivity levels right now? Yeah, I think there are several uh, aspects of this current situation that should be taken into consideration when we are basically talking about distributed working as it is today. And obviously, since COVID-19 situation started, like an entire world is moving toward working remotely. And that's happening at a scale that never happened before. So software industry is uh, probably the most successful example as due to nature of our work and all the technology tools that we have been already using, we were able to move to this new and accommodate to this new environment and fully distributed working environment relatively fast. So for me and uh, personally and my engineering teams, we already worked with the customers in the US. Those customers often have um, teams in multiple locations and uh, in multiple time zones. And on a typical project, we work uh, with the teams from the West Coast, East Coast. Sometimes there is a team in India. Sometimes our teams are distributed on uh, multiple locations in Andava. 
basically we already lived and breathe distributed software delivery on a daily basis which again allows us to easily move to what i believe is a fully remote and distributed delivery when this all started we kind of knew that this is going to be possible and that we have the tools and processes and the experience but uh, we were still obviously concerned as we never did that at this scale and a majority of our engineers are still uh, used to work from the office and to have someone right next to them who they can talk directly and uh, as soon as they have a question or a concern or a dilemma. So we obviously lost that human to human interaction and we now rely on technology to help us. So I talk on a daily basis with my teams how we can help people deal with the stressfulness of the current situation how we can keep motivation and focus on work in this prolonged isolation. I believe that uh, what we have today is uh, an extreme work from home. And comparing this to, with a regular work from home is uh, like comparing like light exercise to a marathon race. So no one was fully prepared for this. And there's no recipe how to manage all aspects of this situation and companies are people and people are figuring it out along the way and i think that we as a company are doing a great job in dealing with this and i believe that's where the company culture plays an important role and in our case caring for our people and for our customers is one of the core values and built into our dna and as i said i believe that was very helpful all right. Excellent response. Thank you. Uh, Bogdan, how about you? What are, what are you doing in terms of communication and, and productivity with your teams? We were working distributed from the beginning. So this didn't took us by surprise. We tend to avoid large meetings. Of course, large meetings are not productive, neither in, uh, in face-to-face meetings, but uh, definitely are not productive in a remote environment. So we tend to avoid this by uh, replacing them with emails. So internal communication with the teams or uh, doing uh, some uh, all hands. We try to limit those in three emails so that we give the team more focus time. Because uh, believe it or not, the productivity of individuals is growing through this uh, isolation because they have more focus time. It's not the disruption of the colleagues, it's just focus time. So that's why we try to agree small meetings between two, three people, focused so that in the end the guys will have more focus time to deliver. Sure. Okay. Uh, so, you know, something is, as both of you were talking, something that I wanted to ask you about that I know has been a ch- is, is a challenge for my own team right now as we start to begin new projects is the difference between maintaining productivity in an ongoing capacity on a project on, on which we're already working versus kicking off a new project, right? So can either of you speak to that? I assume your teams are already engaged, but have you launched any projects since this has started? Because I know that for us, that's been, you know, a lot of challenging conversation around what kind of dynamic there's going to be when we are meeting people for the first time and establishing trust and, you know, opening lines of communication. Yeah, so uh, we had the chance to start Small Opportunity meeting people for the first time. We applied basically the same uh, principles that I've said before. So on the first meeting uh, is just sharing the video. So we were able to put names against faces. They could see us in uh, our uh, home environment. And also I could see um, the customer local environment because everybody's working from home. And it gives a personal touch to this. And uh, I think it is working better than a meeting in an office. I don't think this stops bringing new business. How about you, Vlad? Any thoughts? So I think uh, that uh, the companies will have to, let's say, reinvent some processes and in order to accommodate to this new reality. Another technique that uh, can be useful if we are starting a new distributed project right now is to mix people from various locations in a single Scrum team. And I use that a lot when we are ramping new teams for new projects. For example, let's say that your project requires a team of 30 engineers and that you'll have 15 engineers on one and 15 on another location. So instead of, let's say, building four different Scrum teams, 
uh, two on one and two on, on another location. Uh, you can build uh, four teams and each four of those are a mix of people from multiple locations. And I know that's against Scrum best practices and typically is not recommended. And most likely for a while you sacrifice team velocity and efficiency, but in the long run, you are going to build a distributed team that works as a real team. So again, once people get a chance to work with each other in the same team, that helps to create a team environment that again helps open the communication channels between people on various locations. And after a while, once you feel like you made a, a nice progress, you can move those teams and have a single team on a single location. All right, excellent. So just changing gears a little bit, both of you lead large groups of people, large teams, lots of individuals. In terms of maintaining morale from a leadership perspective, are you doing the same kinds of things that you're doing right now? Are you doing something different? Is it the same thing with a twist? How are you handling the personalities and the need to keep people focused and motivated as well as productive? I think in a way, you, you can prepare for such things uh, because uh, I'm not a tool or process person, but it's clear for me what I'm expecting from people that I like to work with. So I like to work with people that are independent, motivated, and cares a lot what they are doing. And because of these qualities, I'm looking for these qualities, I was able to create a, in the last five, six years, a strong team of delivery leads that have these qualities. Together with them, I'm delivering and manage this large group of people that are uh, in the accounts that I'm leading. They are choosing their own people to deliver. So based on this, it's uh, the people that we have in our teams are quite mature and uh, we don't do anything special. Of course, we are a little bit more flexible with the working time. In Serbia now is uh, from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. It's locked down. So basically you can't go outside so we are fine for uh, and we agreed with the people working there to take time during the day to take a walk to do the shopping then when uh, they are back to continue working after business hours this kind of short tweaks uh, small tweaks will help go uh, positive from business perspective how the people deliver being with the whole family all day uh, your kids uh, ask for more attention uh, than usual seeing you all day there this makes us value more the selection of the right people in your team. Again, those three values are really, really important in setting up the, the, the right behavior. Independent, motivated, and uh, cares about what they are doing. How about you, Vlada? How are you keeping morale up? Are you doing the same things, different things? Yeah, I mean, we definitely pay additional attention. And if you look into the typical uh, meeting, I believe that we spend like the first 10, 15 minutes talking about how everybody is doing, if there are any issues and, and so on. I mean, these are uh, the stressful times and we are all worried about our mental health and uh, this prolonged isolation could definitely potentially impact on a morale and productivity. There are negative headlines around us. As I said, we all worry about it. Maybe we have someone who is sick or elderly and like only fighting the urge to go panic buying for toilet paper can all put the work on the back burner, right? So uh, we do talk like, um, you know, normal with the people and I'm trying to give them some advices and then they are giving the same advices to their teams, but basically it's about uh, communicate as much as you can, like for managers, provide a clear communication to the teams. Teams are trying to recreate some social contacts using video conferencing uh, to translate some in-office social activities to an online environment, like maybe celebrate Thursdays, um, give praises for goals reached, etc. A lot of teams are, uh, and actually leads are organizing a regular meetings with no agenda, with their people, like just grabbing a coffee or a drink and having a quick chat. So overall, I mean, uh, I think that a short run period of one or two months working full time from home, based on what I'm hearing from the other, we should be personally painful, but bearable. A longer period of, uh, say, two or three months or more, 
could lead to some economic and health costs. So that's what we are trying to prevent, but there is no like magic formula, basically. No, of course not. I mean, you know, we're all figuring this out together for the first time. So that's why we're sharing right now to get good ideas. I mean, for my team, we started having a daily call in the afternoon just for 15 minutes. And I said, there is no agenda for this call. I don't want to hear any negative anything. No headlines, no nothing. We're just going to get on and we're going to have fun. And if you saw a funny video, uh, we want to see it. If you you know heard something hilarious, please share it. And it's just it's just nice to get on and just be social and not have to talk about what's happening outside and not have to talk about work for a little while. So I, I hear you. And I've seen that pop up in other areas around the company. I think constant communication is obviously critical but it can't all be about work because even in a perfectly normal environment, our lives are not all about work, right? There's a balance, there's a fluidity to it. And, you know, we are social animals. We have other things in our minds and hearts. So it's interesting to hear you both kind of respond to that. So thanks for that. All right. So remote working is not new to us because we do use distributed teams, but a lot of other companies are kind of experiencing this for the first time. And Some of them are adapting very well. Some of them are really kind of going through some pain. So over the time that you both have been leading teams in this way, what do you think the top two pieces of advice would be if you could kind of pull that and share that with other listeners and other companies? Vlada, why don't we start with you this time? Yeah, sure. So uh, I understand that this is going... To sound like a cliche, but uh, I cannot overemphasize the importance of uh, good communication between teams on various locations. On a typical project, we have a multiple geographically distributed teams. And if you don't pay attention to the communication between teams, and if you don't manage it uh, and do something proactively, what typically happens is that uh, folks within a team on one location, they work and communicate well. Uh, while there is a gap in communication between locations. And it's often us versus them symptom. And I believe I already mentioned two techniques that I typically use to open those communication channels. One is to make sure that people spend some time in person together, if possible. And the the other uh, was to start with the mixed scrum teams. And once you build that team spirit and uh, communication channels, you can move to having the separated Scrum teams on on multiple locations. All right, Bogdan, how about you? I'm quite close with what Vladan said. So basically the first is uh, people. So everything is about people. So um, especially in distributed teams, you have to take care of what people would be in these teams. I think this is quite essential. And the second part is to have a leader in the team that will grow the level of trust between people in those teams. And he should pay a lot of attention on that. Yeah, and definitely if a client starts for the first time this journey, definitely they need a partner that had done this before. Otherwise, we'll take all the pain and all the things that other hits from the beginning. So it will be quite challenging. I think these are the top three things that I have in mind. All right. Good stuff. Okay. So we have a little bit of time left. We're going to play a little game called This or That. It's kind of a lightning round. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I'm going to give you a choice between two different things. I want both of you to answer with your preference. Now, I didn't write these. So, uh, you know, if you have other issues, philosophical issues with any of these questions, you can we can take it up later. All right. Here we go. Ready? So we'll, we will do Bogdan first and then Vlad a second so we don't step on each other. Ready? Here we go. Bogdan. Miro or Trello? Trello. Vlada. Yeah, I'm Trello user since it came out, so Trello. Bogdan, analog or smartwatch? Neither. Whoa, no watch. Curveball. Vlada. <laughs> yeah, I recently bought a Apple Watch and my uh, real di- my dilemma was Apple Watch or Garmin. Yes, that's a tough choice, I know. All right, Bogdan. Streaming or physical media? Streaming, of course, yeah. Vlada? uh, Streaming for movies and vinyls for music. Oh, all right. We're going to talk about that later. 
All right. Uh, speaking of music, Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify. I have a teenage daughter. Clara. It's actually uh, Tidal for me. And I moved from Apple Music to Tidal like four or five years ago when Tidal introduced hi-fi audio quality. Okay. We're definitely going to have a music conversation later. That's it. Vin vinyl plus <laughs> Tidal? Yes. Okay. All right. Bogdan, Revolut or Old Big Bank? Both. Uh, Revolut. Let's say Revolut. Okay. Vlada? Yeah, I'm afraid we only have Old Big Banks where I live here in Serbia. So... That's my choice. All right. And then this last one, I almost don't even want to ask it because it's kind of a bear trap for uh, security concerns, but uh, Teams or Zoom? Of course, Teams. <laughs> Lada? Yes, Teams too, but uh, I don't like Zoom's UX and UI feel so outdated, so definitely Teams. All right. Fair enough. Thank you guys for being with me today. We're going to continue this conversation in a part two, but right now we're going to wrap it up. One other thing I'd like to mention is that we are also offering an opportunity for companies who are struggling right now, finding themselves having difficulties navigating the challenges in distributed software delivery, you know, struggling with the way teams are working and being distributed that are usually on site. We'd like to have a conversation with you. We have one-to-one -one sessions with our delivery experts like Vlada that we can offer. Now, this is not a sales call. There's no obligation here. It's merely a conversation to help give you some insight from the things that we have learned over the past 20 years of doing this ourselves. And if we can help, we'd love to, right? And this can cover lots of stuff like how to keep people who are usually on-site motivated in this new and unfamiliar world of remote working keeping up levels of productivity and engagement with teams suddenly being distributed that used to be together, tools and processes. Certainly, if you have specific questions around that, we can help steer you in a certain direction. And, you know, how to resolve specific problems in getting these distributed working processes up and running. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please reach out to us. You can email us at contactus at indava.com. And again, this is not a sales call. It's just a conversation. See if we can help out. All right. So, Please reach out if that's something you're interested in. And don't forget to like this podcast and subscribe, please, to stay up to date with all of our shows. Thanks.